Good evening, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick from Grace Episcopal Church. I'm the rector and pastor there. I am unfortunately in my home and I'm being quarantined um, until this coming Sunday. So I hope to be able to uh, lead worship this Sunday with you all. But today on this eighth day of December, we are celebrating and commemorating uh, the wonderful ministry and the man uh, named Richard Baxter, who lived in the 17th century. I'll tell you a little bit more about this wonderful, amazing Christian pastor in just a few moments. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence. We are on page 127 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 127. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all of our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalms this evening, our psalm this evening is Psalm 90, and we're really only using a small portion of Psalm 90 this evening, found on page 719, Psalm 90, only verses 14 through 17 this evening. 14 through 17 of Psalm 90. Please join me in reflecting on this psalm together or in the silence of your own meditation, wherever you might be. Psalm 90, verses 14 through 17. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning, so shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show us your servants, your works, and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord be our, our Lord, our God, be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands, prosper our handiwork. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures continue with a passage from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verses uh, 6 through 15. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your Father in heaven will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was saying, today we are celebrating the festival day and commemoration of Richard Baxter. He was a pastor, priest, and uh, writer. 
He was mostly known for uh, being a scholar and teacher of the vicar, uh, when he was the vicar of Kindermister, minister, uh, in 1647. He was born in 1615 in uh, Shorefire, England, and then uh, was taught in many different local schools in that area. But in 1638, he spent most of his ministry as a schoolmaster, and especially to the parliamentarian army uh, during the outbreak of the English Civil War in 1642. And though he had he leaned more towards a Puritan, in other words, more simple liturgy uh, style and prayer, um, and even sacramentals. Um, with no images, no stained glass windows, no crosses. These were things that most of the Puritans would prefer. And so he leaned towards that way, and he also then wrote a book about Reformed Pastors in 1656. It was there that then he was best known, though, is for his uh, uh, forthfulness of standing for the reform of the Book of Common Prayer in 1662. And because of that, he was incredibly impressed on how the changes did change uh, that uh, Book of Common Prayer at that period of time. Unfortunately, he is most known because of his Puritan bent um, as being somebody uh, counter uh, Anglican Church. And so um, he lived most of the rest of his days until 1691, um, until he, when he passed away. Um, ridiculed uh, for his lack of leadership uh, for the Anglican Church of England. One of, though, one of the most impressive pieces of his writings was put to music, a number uh, 625 in our hymnal, uh, Ye Holy Angels Bright Who Wait at God's Right Hand. This hymn was written by Richard Baxter and still is in our hymnal and is it really speaks to the simplicity of our relationship with God. Let me read the rest of the very first verse. Ye holy angels bright who wait at God's right hand, or through the realms of lightly, lightly fly at your Lord's command. Assist our, day, our song for else a theme too high doth seem for mortal tongue. My soul bear thou my bart, triumph in God above. So as we go to bed tonight, I hope as you listen to that, just a brief little piece in that hymnal, if you have a copy at your at home with the hymnal, take a look at it. It's really a very beautiful piece, and it's very simple as God has our own relationship with us, that we seek God, not because we need to, but because God is with us in all things around us. And it is how God reveals God's self, especially in our dreams as we go to sleep tonight. I hope you are awakened with God's wonderful angels and place of rest. Amen. We continue our prayers now on page 132, page 132. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. This is our colic prayer for this day.
we give you thanks, most gracious God, for the devoted witness of Richard Baxter, who out of love for you followed his conscience at cost to himself, and at all the times rejoiced to, see, to sing your praises in word and deed. And we pray that our lives, like his, may be well-tuned to sing the songs of love, and all our days be filled with praise of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us continue our, and offer our prayers at this time. If you'd please join me by turning to page 388 of your Book of Common Prayer, page 388. Prayers of the People, Form 4. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may, may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations of the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly for the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. I'd like to especially today remember and praise God in thanksgiving for those who are celebrating a birthday or a wedding anniversary. I'd like to especially remember Laura Taylor who celebrated her birthday yesterday and today for James Michael Barnes who celebrates his birthday today. We give thanks for all those who celebrate the gift of life and we pray for those who are celebrating their love relationship as couples and as partners. We give thanks, O oh Lord, for this day, as we remember uh, Callie and John Desmukes, who celebrated their uh, wedding anniversary several days ago. We give thanks, O oh Lord, on this past Sunday when they celebrated their wedding anniversary. And for all couples who are celebrating a, their wedding anniversary or their engagement, we give thanks, O oh Lord, for the gift of love and friendship. And especially we give thanks, O oh Lord, for bringing those people into our lives that means so much and so dearly to us that we are thankful for that, for those people and for those relationships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or, or spirit. Give them the courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We especially pray, Lord, for those who are suffering from the coronavirus. I'd like to especially pray for a dear friend of mine, uh, who uh, is her name is Pat Martin, who I served and ministered to while I was in Springfield. I'd also like to pray for my wife Susie, as both of them are getting over the, the coronavirus, and for many other parishioners who have the virus at this time. And wherever you might live, we pray, Lord, for the recovery for all those who are, are recovering from the coronavirus, especially those in nursing homes, um, especially at uh, Gaither Suites, where there's been an outbreak there. We pray for those at uh, assisted living as well at uh, the Rivercrest and for uh, the lakes here locally. We pray for those who are also at uh, uh, different nursing homes, especially at Parkcrest and Heritage Manor in Mayfield. I'd like to especially remember uh, uh, Betty uh, Becker, uh, who's in the hospital in Mayfield and for Charles uh, Turok, who's at the hospital here locally, here in, in, uh, in Paducah. We pray for all three of these people, and we ask you, Lord, to be with them, and we ask you to be with all those who are close to we are close to, and those who are recovering from illnesses or surgeries at this time. We pray, Lord, for all of our doctors and nurses, especially. We pray for, in, in thanksgiving, for all those who are being vaccinated as the vac vaccines start to roll out, especially in the UK, 
and around the else in the world and soon to be in our own nation here. I'd like to pray, Lord, for those counselors who are meeting with their uh, those patients who are suffering from anxiety or depression. And we ask you, Lord, to be with them at this time. We pray, Lord, in thanksgiving for these men and women and for these doctors and nurses and psychiatrists who are helping others in these deep and divided times mentally and physically. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We especially pray, Lord, for those who have passed away, and today I'd like to especially remember um, Bishop Terry White's father. His name was Dennis White, who passed away because of complications due to COVID-19. Remember uh, his, uh, Bishop Terry White's family at this time, and especially uh, for all his relatives. We pray for the loss of, their, of his dad. We pray for Dennis's soul and for all of our uh, loved ones, and especially uh, the 20 people who died in Kentucky today because of uh, the virus. We ask you, Lord, to be with all those families at, at this time of mourning, and especially during these holidays for all of our loved ones as we mourn the loss of those both recent and uh, a distant past. Be with us, O Lord Christ, and for our state as we battle this uh, pandemic, and for our nation, and for our world. And we pause now and remind ourselves of these beautiful souls that we commemorate to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lift up all these prayers, Lord, and those posted online at this time that you are also pr uh, uh, praying for. <clears throat> and we give thanks, Lord, for all the blessings of this day. And as we end our night, we pray, Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> we continue now with our prayers on page 134 at the bottom, page 134. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised, for these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this night. I hope you have a wonderful and restful sleep yourself this evening and that you may have wonderful dreams. Please join me again tomorrow at noon for our, uh, for our noonday midday prayers and once again here at uh, 9 o'clock uh, p.m. for our Compline night prayers. Have a wonderful evening. Remember that God loves each and every one of you and so do I and miss many of my people uh, while I'm quarantined right now uh, from being in person with you all. Have a wonderful evening and sweet dreams.